Hello folks, this is video number two of three uh, for this real estate contract, how to read, review, analyze a real estate contract that you absolutely have to know if you're gonna buy property, sell property, if you own property anywhere in the country. Enjoy. Verification of down payment and closing costs. So buyer or buyer's lender or book uh, shall within three days of ex after acceptance deliver to sell or verification of buyer's down payment and closing costs. Verification attached. Okay, so what this means is the buyer is saying to the seller, I promise I'm going to pay it. In fact, here's my money. You know, if they're only putting, let's say, $10,000 down uh, and then the other $90,000 after, you know, at the close of escrow, they'll put that money down. Uh, they have to show that they they have it because the seller doesn't want to get uh, to have this deal not go through. Um, if Even if it's an all cash offer, you know, they may show the seller may want to see the whole, uh, the money, like in a bank account, okay? Uh, all right, so now we get into the first contingency. What the heck does this mean? Okay, let's read this. Um, appraisal, contingency, and removal. This agreement is, or is not, contingent upon a written appraisal of property by a licensed or certified appraiser at no less than the purchase price. Buyer shall, as specified in paragraph da da da, in writing, remove the appraisal contingency or cancel this agreement within 17 days. What the heck does this mean? This means the following. So I want to buy this house for $800,000. If we, if I'm the buyer and I want this contingency, what this means, this agreement is contingent upon a written appraisal. What that means is after we make this agreement, I got 17 days, unless I I ask for more and the seller agrees. Uh, I got 17 days where I can get the property appraised by a professional appraiser. And then that appraiser comes back and says, man, Joe Samuel, this property is only worth like 100,000 or it's worth 750,000 or it's worth, you know, whatever, $5 million, right? Um, if it's appraised for a lot less um, or if, even if it's, I guess, appraised for a penny less, I could cancel the deal that's a contingency i could cancel the deal and i'm within my right to cancel the deal if the appraisal is bad and if i cancel within 17 days and i get all my money back i get the whole deposit back if i scratch this one or is not contingent upon a request that means um, we are not going to get an appraisal or, or if i am i'm not going to cancel the deal because of the appraisal okay so that uh, the buyer wants this contingency, the seller does not. Loan terms, loan application. Within three days after acceptance, buyer shall deliver to seller a letter from buyer's lender or loan broker stating that based on blah, blah, blah. That's the uh, pre-qualification letter or pre-approval letter. Now, that one, if you do it right, you should have that before you even make the offer because you should know, okay, I have $100,000 that I could put toward a house and I have a bank that's willing to give me another 700000 you know, and, and, and use the house as collateral. So so if you don't have that, there you're saying here within three days, I will have that, okay? Loan contingency, ah, we are now on our second contingency. Buyer shall act dil diligently and in good faith to obtain the designated loan. Buyer's qualification for the loan specified is a contingency of this agreement unless otherwise agreed in writing. Uh, now what this means is this, if I say, I'm gonna, I pre-qualified, I, I should get this loan. And then all of a sudden the bank says, oh, Joe Samo, huh? We looked at your, uh, we looked a little closer and we don't want you, <laughs> you know, or, uh, you know, whatever. Oh, you lost your job during this time. We're not going to qualify you or the house didn't appraise for that much or, you know, whatever the interest rates go up. And now we're not going to lend you $700,000. Like, uh, we change our minds, right? If somehow the loan does not go through, I am allowed to cancel the deal and I'm within my rights and, and you'll see later, I get my whole deposit back because we agreed on a loan contingency. I cannot imagine unless the buyer is doing all cash or they're a they're hundred billion percent sure they're gonna get a loan, the buyer should always have this contingency, okay? What this means, loan contingency removal, within 21 days after acceptance, buyer shall, uh, in writing, remove the loan contingency or cancel this agreement, okay? So what this means is this, the buyer has to get that loan approved. Um, and uh, if the buyer realizes that he cannot get the loan approved, he has to cancel the deal within 21 days. Okay, now why does the seller want this? Because 
it's, um, you know, <laughs> I don't see no ring on this finger. <laughs> no, they want to make sure that the buyer is going to, to, to finance this, right? So if the buyer can't do it, then get the heck out so the seller can find someone else to buy this house, right? Um, no loan contingency. Uh-oh. Obtaining a loan specified is not a contingency. This one is, is if, if somebody's buying the property all cash or they know uh, that they're, they're so sure they're going to get the loan. Lender limits on buyer credits. Any credit to buyer from any source or for closing costs is agreed to by the parties shall be disclosed by buyer's lender. If the total credit allowed by buyer's lender is less than the contractual credit, then this just means sometimes um, the buyer is buying the house for 800000 but the seller is giving him back 200000 What the heck? Why would they ever do that? It could be a, <laughs> one of those things. We like to call it uh, fraud sometimes. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, they're, they're like the buyer is going to buy the house for 800000 but then the seller is going to give them back 200000 um, you know, or the seller gives them a big credit so that the buyer gets all this money from the bank and then he's going to get money back. It's rare, but uh, sometimes it's legit, meaning... You know, they give the buyer a credit because the buyer lets the seller live in the house for another six months, okay, uh, or something, whatever. So sometimes, so any of those kind of credits have to be disclosed, okay, so that we, we can make sure nobody is, is defrauding the bank or something, okay. Let's see. Um, buyer stated financing. Seller is relying on buyer's representation of the type of financing specified, right? Um Okay, so this is just, just indicating in detail that, that it better all be accurate. Sale of buyer's property. Wait, 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 wait. Buyer's property? Let's read this. This agreement and buyer's ability to obtain financing are not contingent upon the sale of property owned by any buyer uh, or uh, this agreement and buyer's ability to obtain financing are contingent upon the sale. This is another contingency. Wow, all these contingencies, right? What this means is this. A lot of times... The buyer, you know, especially with residential, right? Let's say they want to sell their house in Mount Helix in, in the San Diego area and they want to move to, you know, what, Rancho Bernardo, right? Uh, so what it is, is that they don't have all of the money to make sure they can do this until they sell the house in Mount Helix. So this one is, they're saying here that, okay, I'll buy the house in Rancho Bernardo, but it's contingent upon me being able to sell my house in Mount Helix, okay? The sellers don't like this because what if that, it's like you're selling your house, which is tough enough, and then you have to worry about the buyer getting their house sold, uh, and if they don't, then they can cancel this whole deal. So that is not a contingency a seller is going to like, but sometimes it's just reality and sometimes it's okay. <laughs> it, it, you know, whatever. It happens a lot, right? Addenda. Uh, <laughs> this is just like if there's uh, all these other forms that, you know, um, that, that are like ancillary to this. Sometimes the, what the short sale addendum is, is that um, the seller owes, you know, $900,000 on the house, but it's no longer worth nine hundred. dollars the, the market crash is only worth $800,000. So the bank is going to forgive some of that. So they have to disclose that because it's kind of a, a, a little more complicated transaction because you got to get the bank to approve what's called the short sale. Uh, septic well and property monument addendum. That means, you know, obviously if you have a septic tank or a well or whatever, you know, there's, there's extra like disclosures that the seller has to do. Okay. Uh, advisories, probate, trust, you know, like if, if it's a trust that's buying it, if it's a probate. Okay. Um, other terms, you know, billions of other terms could be here. Um, you know, some, it, it could be something like, you know, contingent, uh, upon, seller removing um whatever tree house oh that sounds like so much fun why would the seller why would the buyer want that right <laughs> but maybe there's a tree house on this freaking house and the buyer doesn't want it right um okay so allocation of cost inspections reports and certificates unless otherwise agreed to in writing this paragraph only determines who is to pay for the inspection test certificate or service. It does not determine who is to pay for any work recommended. Okay, so this one is gonna be, because during this process, you're gonna need, um, 
you're going to need all these like inspections and appraisals and all that good stuff. So here, let's see, uh, someone's going to pay for a hazard zone disclosure, you know, so that one, maybe it's like the seller will pay for some sort of, you know, just to make sure you get a report that says you're not in a hazard zone. Um, and then maybe seller shall pay for the following if it's in a, you know, whatever, uh, flood re, you know, inspection clearance. I don't know. Like this could be like other things, like depending on the house, you might want something that says, oh, this is not in a flood zone. Or if it was recently renovated, you want it like a certificate saying that it is okay to occupy. Or if it's a new house, like that's in construction or in renovation, it, it may be contingent upon the buyer providing, you know, an occupy report. I apologize if I'm spelling that wrong. I'm kind of doing this quick, right? Okay. Um, and then, you know, who's going to buy it? Who's going to sell it? Or who's going to pay for all these, these reports, right? All right. Good stuff, folks. So you just watched video number two, the final one, number three, just click right here or here. It's one of them. Okay. You pick. So you can watch the third of three videos. All right. Good stuff. And if you have questions, just let me know in the comments.